Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My YouTube family, I hope you would be fine and you would be having a great day. Uh, okay, to, in today's lecture, basically I would address question number four uh, of gender study that was asked in CSS exam 2020. Basically, many students, they were having some sort of difficulty while giving examples in these questions because every question in CSS that is up to 20 marks, so, so students are of opinion that what could be the reasonable length on the basis of which they would get good score. Uh, so that's why I have chosen this uh, question. Uh, at the same time, I just wanna, sh uh, I wanna pass on a couple of things to you. Uh, if you have any confusion in any question, so you may raise your concerns in the comments of video. On the other hand, uh, whatever the queries you have, and if you wanna share your own thoughts with me, so that would be fine for me. And second thing, a uh, different strategy that I have uh, uh, chosen today, that uh, at the end of the lecture, uh, I have uh, made certain quiz questions for you. Uh, basically, that is just to take your interest in this video, uh, that after watching whole video, whether you would be in such positions to answer these uh, questions or not. Uh, basically, if you are going to answer these questions at the end, it means that you have fully understood the lecture and you don't need to rely on other sources as well and you need not to, to repeat this video again. So I hope so that it would be very good experience. Uh, but at the same time, if you want to suggest me some things that uh, what could be the possible ways by which we can improve uh, our video so and uh, you can improve your knowledge as well so definitely I would welcome your suggestions okay uh, I would start from the introduction when we talk of certain languages so every country you know that uh, in every country there's a language by which people they are going to interact with one and another and all lang when we talk of certain languages so no language is 100 percent free from a gender discrimination basically in all languages you would feel some sort of uh, discrimination and it is a gender oriented and there is a, some sort of you say distinction has been made uh, for male as well as female when we talk of uh, certain types of language on the basis are on the basis of gender related group so we divide these languages into three categories grammatical first is grammatical gender language that is known as a gender language as well and second is a natural gender language and third is genderless when we talk of grammatical gender language or gendered language it means that there is a discrimination and there is a duion there is asymmetry on uh, in the form of a noun as well as a pronoun because different noun and pronouns are going to be used for male as well as female and this example and when we talk of uh, uh, the, the example of any language that is uh, the clear reflection of gender language so that is uh, Hebrew language uh, you can say language of Israel uh, that is the that is the more relevant example because it is full of gendered words and the second gender related uh, group that is a natural gender language it means that as well as nouns are concerned so there is no discrimination between male and female but when we talk of pronouns so there is some sort of uh, division exists uh, the examples could be the natural gender language that would be Scandinavian countries as well as English language when you talk of genderless language genderless language means a neutral language means that there is a no division uh, in nouns pronouns verbs and adjectives when we are talking of masculine or feminine genders or when we're talking of male as well as female and genderless languages I told in the beginning that there's a no any language that you can say that that is 100% free from gender duion but comparatively the words remain same with a few exceptions and the best examples for genderless languages is uh, that is uh, Chinese uh, Persian language Turkish language okay 
So when we talk of certain languages, there are two distinctions. First of all, that one country has different language from other country and there is some sort of variation in their language, in their words, how they are going to uh, express their, how they are going to express identity to male as well as a female. And the second thing is that when we talk of one language of one country, so even in a, in a one language, so there are intra differences that in one language there is also again some sort of division uh, in order to express the relationship between male as well as female. As you know very well that uh, individuals uh, basically what is when you talk of certain country a certain nation so it means every country has its own culture and when you talk of culture so culture the basic component of culture that is based on language so that's why language is very important on the basis of which people interact with each other they express their feelings they convey their meanings and through which the people that they can show their message to other individuals so these are the that was about introduction about languages that what are the gender related groups and uh, what are the what are what is the level of languages uh, what are the differences inter differences as well as inter differences and so on okay now i come to the basic point that what is the meaning of phrase language is gendered this phrase that was uh, that was uh, that has been made in your question so basically when we say that a language is gendered it means that we are going to use gender specific noun as well as pronouns to differentiate between male as well as female so in other words we can say that in order to distinguish various genders when we are going to uh, when we are going to rely on certain specific noun as well as a pronouns so that means that language is gendered okay when basically i have told you in my previous uh, lecture as well that when individual is born then individual is given identity and when we say that individual has been given certain identity so that identity is conveyed with the help of certain words with the help of certain symbols or language okay so why we say that one individual is going to be differentiated from other individuals so the only criterion mostly that remains very prominent and that remains flawless that means sexual organ that sexual organ remains the criterion on the basis of which individuals they have been separated from other that they have been given different identity from other individuals so when we are going to uh, you and that basically uh, in my next video I would explain especially in chapter number uh, when we talk about certain theories of feminism so in which I would discuss about psychoanalytical feminism so there are two school of thoughts first is Freudian school of thought and other is Lacanian school of thought so when we rely on Lacanian school of thought they are of opinion that Flawless remains the prerequisite criterion on the basis of which individuals have been given different identity. So when individuals have been give, given different identity, then different noun as well as a pronouns are used for those individuals in order to differentiate. Okay, so all nouns, all nouns, uh, they are either masculine or either feminine. So basically we say that when we talk of certain nouns as pronouns, so some nouns are different for male as well as some nouns are different for females. Similarly, some nouns, they are different for female and some pronouns, they are different for female. Okay. And in my next slides, I would explain with various examples. Okay. So when we talk of that language is gender, where does it exist? So basically when we talk of Russian language, German language, Hindi language, Spanish language, Hebrew, so uh, Hebrew language as well. So these languages, they are, you can say that they, uh, their language is gendered, that we are going to use various nouns for male as well as various nouns, different nouns for females. Uh, but 
here in this question one thing is very clear because our focus is not about uh, you can, as I mentioned in my previous slide that when we are going to differentiate language on the basis of gender related groups so I mentioned that it could be that it could be uh, grammatical gender grammatical gender and other is a natural gender and third is genderless so our question is about that language is gendered so natural gender as well as natural gender as well as grammatical gender so both things they are going to be considered in this lecture you can say that in this question both things they are going to be given due weightage so when we are going to use pronoun as well that we use the various pronouns for male as well as a female so you can say that English language is also gender language okay what would be the repercussions of gender languages when our language is gender when in our language is very specific when our language is gender oriented we use different words for male and we use different words for female what could be the repercussions what could be the negative effects on the part of society why we say that language should be free of gender gender oriented words so that equal opportunities could be provided to individuals so individuals they cannot take their role in a limited in a limited perspective so that's why we say that uh, when language is gendered then there would be certain repercussions and what could be the possible repercussions these repercussions could be relating to their social life the, uh, it would affect their political sphere their economic sphere at the same time there you can say that the decision making power and uh, it would suggest their status and role in the society and at the same time you can say that certain stereotypes they would also be affecting certain individuals so because gender language has certain negative effects on the basis of which we are of opinion that uh, rather than focusing on gender language we should rely on genderless language okay in next slides i would elaborate uh, i would elaborate these uh, points with certain examples okay first is that when language is gendered how it affects our social power relations okay so you can take example of uh, english language so there are two words one is steward and other word is stewardess when you use in english dictionary the word steward so steward mean a person who performs his services to a particular uh, group of people or a person who take care a person who takes care of a particular place and the other meaning is uh, for the word steward is that a person who supply food are a person who is engaged in serving a food at a club okay and the other word is and steward is used for a male and stewardess is used for female and when we talk of the meaning of stewardess it means that a female attendant uh, who is giving services in in passenger airplane okay so basically we are going to use different word for male at the same time different word for female but when we talk of when we are going to rely on certain word for male so it relates with organizing skills it relates with certain control and when we talk of certain words relating to female it relates with assistance it relates with the certain supportive role so that's why we say that when language is gendered it would affect your social relations that on the basis of which category you have to deal with certain individuals so uh, this example uh, is relates with the social power relations okay 
Now I would elaborate with certain other uh, concept that whole gender language uh, that determines the role of male as well as female. Okay, so certain words we can say that in language there are certain binary words. What are those binary words? We say rational, irrational. So what when we use the word rational, so rational is used for which identity? So mostly men they're going to be considered rational and women they're going to be considered irrational. Similarly, we use words objective and subjective. So objective word objective is going to be associated with men that they are more objective and women they are going to be they are going to be considered as subjective similarly when you talk of certain role active and passive so active is associated with men why have we use the word active for men because we we have our own opinion that men are engaged in productive role they are related they are going to associate themselves in income generated po uh, projects so that's why they perform active role that their services they are going to be rewarded and we say that women they are going to be associated in domestic affair and the services they are not going to be rewarded and they do not contribute to economic progress of society that's why we say that they are going to perform passive role although there is also criticism but as well as language is gendered how meaning they are going to be interpreted i am just going to focus on that particular era on the particular area as well okay so another example is active versus passive when we talk of your sexual behaviors so active is associated with men and passive is associated with female okay similarly when we talk of uh, another binary words dominant and submissive so domination is going to be considered with men that male need to be dominant they need to be authoritative and when you talk of submissive submissive is associated with the women that women need to be submissive women need to compromise women women should try to adjust themselves with the situation okay so this is a message that how we are going to socialize individual how we are going to provide training to male as well as a female that what should be the appropriate role so when we are going to assign certain words and certain role to male as well as a female accordingly it would reflect their lifetime opportunities that in return what they can get what they can get so if a man they perform a dominant role it means that they would be very successful and if women they adopt policy of submissive role in their life then they can spend their lives in a better way so similarly when we talk of certain other words independent and independent so society expect that men need to be independent and society expect that women need to be dependent on the other hand we can say that overall women can be independent but that cannot be the expectation of society in our society you must have heard that when a person is a male person is going to get married so it is generally said that before going uh, before taking a decision for marriage you need to have a good job you should be in such position that you can take care of your family so before taking a very important decision of your life you need to be independent as well as a female is concerned so female is not supposed to have independent life before her marriage so what is the expectation on the part of society relating to female mostly we say that if you are good uh, at domestic affairs so that is a sufficient so economic independence is not associated with the female so similarly we use independent and dependent another example is actor and actress and masculine and feminine so basically all the, we see that there are certain words that they are binary they have binary nature and uh, due to their conflict they have different role they have different opportunities in life okay now i would like to express the example of gender stereotypes that whole stereotype 
when you talk of certain stereotype of behavior that how it affects opportunities for male as well as female. Okay, when we talk of certain non-traditional professions, so compounding nouns they are going to be used for that. For example, we use a male nurse because society expect that nurse is generally understood that nurse is a female, but male could also be a nurse. So that's why we use a word a male nurse. Similarly, a surgeon is associated with male, and uh, if a female is a surgeon, so we clarify it with a compound that a female surgeon similarly a doctor a female doctor and when we talk of cleaner traditionally it was associated uh, in domestic affair cleaning is associated with the female but when you talk of outdoor activities so uh, cleaning was associated with the male so in these days females they are also going to take part in uh, cleaning activities so that's why we are going to use a word a lady cleaner okay so basically the purpose of giving this example is that how society is biased, how society has a narrow approach, how they are going to interpret roles, that these roles, they are going to be traditional. And if these roles have become a non-traditional, so we are going to, we are going to use, uh, we, are, we are going to use compounding and nouns in order to make the uh, roles are very specific and uh, you can say gender oriented okay similarly the another example that could be used in order to express our biasness in our social relations that could be uh, abusive language even in pakistani society when you abuse I, I i'm not going to incur you that you need to abuse your colleagues but generally i'm going to interpret it that whenever you use or you must have experience uh, you must have heard someone that if someone is going to rely on abusive language so mostly we always use female in abusive language rather than male that also shows biasness that only female is going to be targeted and other example that could be used emotional language when you are going to make someone emotional again you take sport of uh, feminine word you always rely on feminine gender rather than masculine gender that shows our uh, biasness so that is not necessarily that within a same gender or within a different gender whether you are going to rely on this or not so basically irrespective of the gender you always focus on female in your abusive language as well as in your emotional language okay similarly when you talk of certain uh, you can say uh, slurring words are pejorative terms like slut, bitch and sissy. So these words they are going to be discussed but mostly women they are going to be targeted in these words. So all these examples express society uh, attitude towards the women that how women they are going to be treated and what the level of importance they are going to be granted by the members of society okay another example that is okay that uh, in this slide i would explain uh, masculine that how we use normally masculine uh, masculine genders in our life as you know very well that there are two prominent generics uh, that is a masculine gender and feminine gender masculine gender that is going to be associated with male and a feminine gender that is going to be associated with female okay but the thing is that normally normally in our daily activities irrespective of the role of a male as well as a female normally whenever we are going to express certain things so we have more vintage, we have a more inclination, we give a more preference to masculine gender and we ignore feminine gender. The example could be in Finnish language, a word that is going to be used for a lawman or a lawyer. 
So a, a, similar, a word that is going to be generally used that is lachymize. So lachymize is a word irrespective that is a male or a female. So if you are talking of certain uh, liar, so uh, you are going to use a word lachymize. So that is masculine in nature. Okay. At the same time, when you talk of certain writer, you always use the word for fatter. It is in Norwegian language that for fatter mean that you are talking of certain writer. So writer could be a male, a writer could be a female, but for when you use the word for fatter, that is masculine. That is masculine in nature. Okay. There is only one condition when you use a certain specific name of a female being a writer then you are going to use the word fetterina so basically fetterina word is going to be uh, that is going to be derived from the word for fatter okay and even when you talk of your english uh, language so in general expression you say that as when a student drops a pencil he should also pick it up but you never use the word that when a student drops a pencil she should also pick it up so we have our more inclination towards male generics masculine gender so this is that again we are our language is a gendered we don't provide equal opportunities in our expressions although we say that masculine term is going to be associated with the male and the feminine term is going to be associated with the female but on the other hand there are certain general expressions where we mostly use such generics that they have more reference to male rather than female okay another example that could be in our gender language that is sexiest attitude that all the time we divide the social relations in masculine as well as feminine all the time we acknowledge roles all the time we distribute our works we assign various duties on the basis of sex that is a male that is a female and we use certain specific gender specific words that like a grandfather like a mother like a sister so basically when we use certain specific words and we use we are going to encourage sexiest language it means we are going to divide society and accordingly we are going to assign a different role to different identities we are going to expect different expectations on the part of different individuals so again that shows our division in society and again that is on the basis of our gender language okay and other uh, thing uh, that could be seen in gender language that in terms of status the example is that whenever you are going to address something or you are going to you are going to share certain gender related messages so you have certain honorary titles and whenever you are going to address someone on the basis of status you use different word for example mr mrs miss and the last one miss the first mr that is going to be used for male and mrs that is going to be used for a married girl and miss girl miss means that unmarried girl and the last one is that it could be used for married as well as unmarried so basically that again that is that indicates gender language that how it affects the status of various individuals okay and another example is that in chinese language there are certain words which are going to be considered uh, they are going to be considered more important and they are going to be given more weightage as compared to other words the example is that there are certain radical characters and when these radical characters when they make a word sun then this word is going to be given more preference as compared to the word women because the characters which are going to be used in women they are going to be considered inferior 
So basically these example indicate that how gender language depicts the status of various individuals in society. Another example that could be used for male and female in gender language relating to economic and political standing. Gender language always shows our individual thinking on the basis of which individual opportunities could be established. The example would be that during a campaign, uh, during a political campaign in the United States, a certain slogan that was going to be used for a female, a bitch ran for the president. It means that when we use the word bitch, so bitch is going to be associated, you know very well that this word is going to be associated for male or female. So this is understood, the word bitch is going to be connected with the women rather than men. So when you are going to promote such slogans, a bitch ran for president, it means that you are going to limit their opportunities that you are going to misguide other individuals that they, that they should not support that lady who is going to run for the campaign of presidential election. And accordingly, your opportunities would be limited on the basis of your narrow approach, on the basis of your ideologies. Because when you use the word bitch, so what, is, what do you mean by bitch? So bitch is going to be considered as a, you can say that is a disregarder, that is not going to be given weightage. So if that person would become your president, so what the level of your leadership? So in uh, directly, you are going to discourage people not to support that individual, not to support a certain specific gender. You can say that is feminine gender. So we see that gendered language always limits your economic opportunities political opportunities as well as economic opportunities. And when you talk of certain economic opportunities, the best example could be that there are a certain occupation, certain occupations. And when we use certain nouns for those occupations, they, ha they have more inclination, they are more oriented towards masculine gender, or you can say masculine form. For example, you use the word chairman, chairman of union council, chairman, of the chairman of union council, chairman of district, or chairman of division and so on. So basically when you use the word chairman, so chairman is associated with male or female. Obviously chairman word is going to be associated with the male. So it means when you have certain occupations which are gendered, which do not encourage a woman to take part, so psychologically it affects women's thinking that they are going to be excluded to be part of such professions. Okay, the next example is that how gendered language negatively affects our personal as well as a professional relationship in our daily lives. Men, when men and women interact with, with each other, so how gender language is going to affect their relationship? Okay, in our society, there are certain slang words which are going to be used for men. What are those words? Like you use the word dude, stud, as well as hung. So when you use the word dude, you know very well that dude is used, dude, stud, and hung, they are going to be used for male or female. So these words mostly they are going to be used for male. Why? Because men they look, they are more stylish, they are more impressive and they have a more charming personality. So that's why they are going to be described by these words. And when you talk of certain other relationship, when you talk of certain other words uh, relating to women and their relationship, so you use a very specific word like fox broad, chick, and s. So all these words, they are on the basis of sexual ability. That women, when you are going to appreciate a female, that is on the basis of certain sexual abilities. So this is a difference 
that gender language when you talk of a men appearance so you always show them as a more attractive and stylish and impressive and elegant and and so on but when we talk of a woman that they are impressive and they need to be they need to be given more space and they need to be get more closer so you are going to highlight their sexual ability so again we say that gender language doesn't provide equal opportunities to male and female gender language always reflects a biased opinion towards various genders in our society okay and other example in a gender language that how it affects our beliefs attitudes and behavioral practices okay here i am going to give you example in the island uh, from the island of java that in japanese language mostly a word is used in social relationship between a wife and uh, between uh, between wife and husband so a husband always address his wife as a dick dick means older sister uh, sorry dick means younger sister and a wife always addresses her husband as a mess mess means older brother so irrespective of the age that even a male when a female is younger than a male so male always address female as a dick as a younger sister and even husband has husband is a younger then his wife his wife would always use a word mess as a older brother so this is their culture so we say that gender language but when you compare with other societies this example may not find fit uh, and yeah that's true but in but we, that's why we are going to say that gender language always reflects our beliefs attitudes and our behaviors as well similarly when you talk of english language then you use the word bachelor and spinster so bachelor word is going to be used for male and spinster is going to be used for female but when you use words bachelor or spinster it this is true that they are going to be divided for various gender but it reflects various opportunities which are entirely different for example when you talk of uh, when you talk of word bachelor so bachelor means that a person who is unmarried and who is very happy and when you use the word spinster of a female it means a female who is unmarried but unhappy that she is not lucky that she has not married yet and she has not tasted the real taste of his life so basically what is common in the world of bachelor and spinster the common thing is unmarried but one unmarried is very you that is going to be considered as a lucky for male and if a female is unmarried that is going to be considered as a curse so how gender language reflects our beliefs and attitudes similarly another example that that is very common in our behaviors and in our beliefs that whenever you go to market to buy something so, and uh, especially when you talk of certain clothing patterns so pink color is always associated with the female and blue color has always associated with male okay so I, that is uh, the explanation i have elaborated earlier okay now i come to that what would be the potential benefits of modifying languages to be more gender neutral that why we say that we have elaborated in our previous slides that what could be the possible reasons to get out of gender language so i have elaborated many points i have given you various examples now we are going to move to the other phase that what could be the possible benefits so the possible benefits could be that it would be if we are going to uh, we are going to get out of gender language it means we are going to have a society that is not male biased and we are going to have a certain society where you are not going to rely on certain masculine generics
At the same time, we are going to have certain society that is going to promote social equality rather than social inequality in society. And then we say that if we are going to promote a certain society where we are going to have a genderless language, it means that we are going to provide equal opportunities and we are not going to deprive certain individuals uh, for performing certain roles. Uh, previously, I gave you example of chairman. So how the word chairman has been replaced with the word chairperson that a female could also be entitled to hold this post as well. Similarly, we see that if we are going to have a genderless language, so it would develop our own individual thinking and it would change our perception about society. Now I come to conclusion that what could be the possible, what could be, uh, what, how we are going to conclude our uh, topic. So it could be that gender language depicts and it predicts and it suggests the overall level of gender inequality in that country or in whole society because you are going to have a narrow approach you don't provide equal opportunities you you affect certain genders psychologically politically economically and socially so if you want to provide level playing opportunities and if you if you want to provide fair opportunities to all gender then it is very essential that you need to eradicate such gender language and you need to encourage neutral language so every individual should be given a due weightage at the same time how we can achieve we know very well that through education through lit by increase through education obviously we would increase our literacy rate we and we need to enhance political empowerment and we need to ensure good governance we need to implement rule of law but at the same time religious leaders can play a very important role and the government policies is very essential if you want to eradicate gender language and if you want to promote natural gender a genderless language so that was the conclusion okay now i come to a certain uh, quiz that if you have if you have understood the whole lecture so now you would uh, you can answer me in comments that what you have perceived from my video that what is gender language this is quiz one and quiz two is whether urdu language is going to be considered a gender language or not so you can express and you can answer third how women are socially affected by gender language so you can give any example from pakistani society and the fourth quiz is that what is difference between gender language and genderless language and the last is that what is example of genderless language tell me any country where gender where comparatively you believe that there is a genderless language and another quiz could be that I have not added to this slide that is that what are the terms which are going to be used what are the gender terms which are going to be used in the island of Java and I have given you example that how husband treats his wife and how wife treats her husband so what are the gendered words between husband and wife so these are the six quiz that you can answer in uh, in the comments of video okay so basically the purpose of sharing these two video was uh, that you could understand many students that they are of opinion that a gender study has been a low scoring subject in previous year uh, so students they were having some sort of fear that whether it would be wise decision to go for gender study or not in your 2020 uh, in your 2021 exam so the purpose of sharing these video was just to analyze your own preparation that you can check your own techniques accordingly it would be easy for you that whether this subject is good or not because some students they have a problem they say that uh, sir we cannot write more than two pages or three pages uh, i believe that you have insufficient knowledge you have not prepared yourself very well on the basis of which you are unable to uh, reproduce lot in your paper uh, 
uh, I think if you prepare very well and if you are going to expand your own vision and uh, you are going to enrich your mind, I hope so that it would be very good for you and you would be very satisfied. You can get good.